Good morning. So, thank you to our president, our recently appointed president. I'm very happy to uh, be operating uh, under his guidance. I'm convinced he's going to bring a lot to the chamber, a lot to the members, and uh, together I think we are going to reach the uh, business community in Italy and bring about some, uh, some positive influence. Um, also thank you uh, to uh, Diana for her uh, uh, words of encouragement uh, from somebody who is uh, an expert in this field and who has already dedicated herself many years to this topic. Um, it's reassuring to know that we are on the right track. Now, during the last conference in March in this same room, we had addressed the topic of gender balance and sexual orientation in business. By the end of the conference, we all agreed that it's extremely important for more women to take lo uh, roles of leadership within our companies and even more importantly, maybe, to have and apply feminine leadership models and not male leadership models taken on by women. We also learned that in any given company, the workforce um, that is not heterosexual by their own definition uh, is on average between 10 and 12 percent. This is a big number uh, compared to what people think. You know, if you do the math for your own companies, some of your companies have thousands of employees. Uh, ask yourself, you know, did I realize how many people were uh, fall under the category LGBT within my organization? Um, one of the things that emerged during the, the conversation we had last time was um, that the way we look does not often reveal our sexual orientation, nor should it. But on the other hand, a simple question like, is your wife enjoying herself here in Italy? might put us in a situation where we either have to lie about our sexual orientation so we can hide it, or we have to reveal a part of our, ourselves that others have often, too often told us, does not belong in the workplace. So today, we're going to address the topic of cultural diversity. And the policies that can be put in place to favor inclusion in its many forms. But it's also the opportunity to meet and greet uh, these people that have so much experience on the topic so that you can become part of this network and you can own uh, these relationships for your own interest and in the interest of the companies that you represent. And Daniel has shown me how powerful a network can be. And sometimes we underestimate the relationship of our relationship. We are sharing with people our dreams, our objectives. And he often reminds us that maybe the person we are talking to is not the person who's going to help us cross that bridge overcome that hurdle, but maybe their wife, their husband, their friend, their companion. So, so do share, give them your business card, follow up after the conference. Cultural diversity and inclusion is particularly important to me on a personal level. My father came to Milan from the very south of Italy in the 1960s. From, from Calabria. And then my mom, during the same years, came to Milan from northern Italy, almost Switzerland, from Sondrio. And together, they started a family here in Milan. Some years later, I started my education in an international school that offered me the opportunity to be part of a, a community of 30 different nationalities. Later, I went abroad for my university degree and at that point, I was part of 104 nationalities present on campus. 
There I met a young woman from New York City, originally uh, her, her grandparents from, uh, uh, from China, and we returned to Italy together and got married. My brother did the same thing, except he was in Spain finishing his master's program and met uh, a woman from Peru, and she too fell in love and came to build a family here in Milan. <clears throat> so as you can understand, I have always been surrounded by people that could offer me an alternative perspective on any given topic. By the way, this is also one of the great values and uh, uh, opportunities that the British Chamber of Commerce offers to all its members. Just by attending one of the monthly luncheons, and tomorrow we have, we have one, so if you haven't signed up and you want to join us, it would be great. Um, you can get an alternative perspective on a topic like Trump, or Brexit, or some other specific topic, or on your own industry. And that is an incredible value that you can have here in Milan without traveling, without just over lunch. Today we will hear from people that have gathered important experience on the topic of diversity. They will share with us their stories so we can use them to make our organizations stronger, more flexible, more resilient, more creative, and more importantly, more adapted to the markets that we serve. In other words, this is something that we can literally take to the bank. So the purpose of today's conference is to expand our horizon so we can have a positive impact on our companies and increase their chances to succeed in today's market. Now, without further ado, let me invite on stage a champion of diversity. Her company, Barclays, is also one of the patrons of our chamber. And we rely on companies like Barclays to support us and keep our institution going so that we can all contribute and promote more and better business. So please welcome our speaker and friend, Alessandra Perlazzelli. <laughs> 